was that I, I, I got a book on composition. It, it got delivered to my house. Um, because I publish a magazine, a lot of other uh, book authors will send, you know, their publishers will send me books to look at. And so I get this composition book, and I'm thinking, okay, this looks good. It had a beautiful cover on it. And I said, I want to see what the book looks like. So I open it up, and very good photographer wrote the book. Really great. I'm looking through it, and I go, wow, this is really good. But as I'm reading it, it just hits me. It's, it, well, what, what do you think the chapters were? Leading lines, rule of thirds, patterns. And I'm thinking, it's 2012. How are we still teaching the same things? If you could go back and get a book on photo composition from 1943, what do you think the chapters would be? <laughs> Leading lines, rule of thirds, the pattern. And I'm like, wow, how can this, all these things in photography have evolved? But when it comes to this one really, really, really important area that's not about the camera and it's not about the tools, um, we haven't evolved in this at all. So I call Matt Laskowski, and you guys have seen Matt here at the conference. I call Matt and I said, hey, Matt, I got a book on composition. Name me what you think the first three chapters are. He's like, I don't know, rule of thirds. <laughs> He's like, it's just, that's how we're all programmed. And I thought, man, there's got to be a different way to teach composition because here's the problem. And this is when it really, this is when this class was born. First rule of composition, you want a great shot? Got to have a guitar in it. <laughs> okay, that's not really, <laughs> all right. That's not, we're going to cover the rule of thirds. I know a lot of you know this, this is not, don't worry, that's why I'm doing this quickly. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop real quick. Here we go. All right, and, and here, so here's what the rule of, if you're, if you're brand new to this, here's what the rule of thirds is. So theoretically, you put up a, in your mind, you divide the image into thirds. And if you wanted to make a more compelling shot of this guy, you wouldn't stick him in the middle of it. Because that's where any person that had no photography, anything, would stick. Like if I, if I had to shoot this guy and my daughter was there with me, she's six, I would say, honey, you take the camera and put him right in the middle of the photo, right? That's what we would do. That's what the average person does. They get, they get you perfectly aligned in the middle. That's what the average person does. And if you do that, you will have the average looking shot. So here the idea is you don't want to put him in the middle. You would maybe put him over here. And there you go. Look, rule of thirds. He's on the left third, or you'd put him over here. Or if he's short, maybe down here. <laughs> but that's the idea. The idea is you put your subject at the apex of, one of these corners here, that these are the happy spots that make, make more interesting, more dynamic stuff. All right, that's rule of thirds. I have one last rule of thirds thing to teach you. How about landscapes? Well, landscapes, instead of putting the horizon line dead in the middle like everybody else would, you're going to take this horizon line and either put it down low if the sky is really interesting, or if the sky is kind of boring, you'll put it at the upper third. Okay, that's the rule of thirds. So that's number one. Rule number two is leading lines. So leading lines are like that little fence that leads your eye down there. See, look down there. Something interesting, bright light. So, but what happens is you can't always count on leading lines. Leading lines are one of those things that happen to be there, and if they're there, you can make, take advantage of them. But if they're not, you know, you know hopefully red, red lines will appear and show you where to shoot. So, all right, next one, filling the frame. All right, this is one that's in every single book on composition. They're like, you know, don't, get, don't be way back there. and all, you know, Fill a frame. It looks much better and more dynamic. It's true. I mean, it does. You can't argue with any of these rules. You need to know these rules, right? But that's it. You know, this... This is not very dynamic. This is the same guy. A split second later, it's, it's a lot more dynamic. All right, then there's patterns. Patterns are great. Patterns are when you see something, you know, repeated again and again. We're drawn to them. But the, the holy grail of shots is when it's interrupted. When all of a sudden you see a pattern of all these yellow ones, and then there's a green one in the middle of it. It's so interesting. And what was really amazing about it was it, it, it wasn't green. I just changed it in Photoshop. So anyway... <laughs> There's this program. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it does amazing things. So, uh, so that's the patterns. If you can, uh, you know, you go to the beach, you see a bunch of white umbrellas, make one of them red. Ka-ching! Okay. The last one is, is my least favorite, but, but it, it's, it's, it's using frames. It's, it's basically putting something inside two trees or two windows or something, and, and it, it kind of frames the artwork. But that's, that's really it. But so those are the five things. I said we were going to use five minutes. I think we only used three, but you get the idea. But, but there's a lot more to it than that. And I think if, if you have these tools, and you have to have these tools because it will help you when you're out there, but there's something more. And I think 
The problem is this. Well, like when you look at some of these great photographers' work, I think that, that we think that sometimes, like a really great photographer, you know, they're, like, they're out on location and they just take, they look over there and they take a camera and they go, one shot, perfect, I'm out of here. And the, but that's, how would we know? Because that's what we see. You just have the feeling like guys like Jay Maisel and Joe McNally walk around, they take one shot, click, gold. They walk for 20 minutes, click, perfect. Click, genius. You know, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was that that, that doesn't exist. Well, it probably exists in some, somebody somewhere. But for everybody else, there, you have to do something different. And that's what I want to talk to you about, which is, you have to work the scene. Unfortunately, I don't know anybody, and, and I know a lot of photographers, I don't know anybody that is a one that takes one shot. There's a lot more to it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the reality of some of this stuff. But before I do this, I need you to help me with something. Who is, I'm going to show you an entire shoot. I'm going to show you like me walking around and struggling to get a shot which is, it's not the exception to the rule. It happens every single time I go out. I wish I could go and just go ka-chow and walk away with something. But I've been in some of the most beautiful places in the world and taken some of the crappiest shots you've ever seen. And it's, it's very frustrating to me, right, to be in front of this incredible thing and go, how can I be this bad? I've got an expensive camera. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let's take a look of some just disastrous shots I took of the Taj Mahal. Now, so here's what happened. I, I, I'd done some research and, and we, I, I realized that if you get there really early in the morning, there's, there's like virtually nobody there. And so I got, I got up at like 4.30 in the morning and there's literally when the doors open to the Taj Mahal, there's eight photographers there waiting to get in. And I'm thinking, man, I've got it made. Unfortunately, it was absolutely socked in with pea soup. So. They all were kind of, this was their first day. I'd already been there two days taking horrendous shots. And I seriously did not have a single shot I liked from two days of shooting in the dense fog. So I get there this morning and I've got the jump on all these other guys. I run to this spot. I get down on my knees. Uh, I set up a tripod. I do, well, I don't think I could set up a tripod. I think I just got down on my knees, steadied, and I'm like taking these terrible shots. And so I start going through the shoot. And here's what I realized is you're, st you're sitting, it's foggy, yeah, but... It's the Taj Mahal. And I'm taking shot after shot. I look at my, my LCD and I'm like, this stinks. And so what do you do? You have to work the scene. You actually have to stop and go, okay, I'm standing in front of this amazing thing and it should be just amazing. I know it's foggy, but who cares? That can be kind of cool. You've got to stop and try different things. So what I did basically was, is to work the scene. So for example, let's just, we're going to kind of look through here and say, okay, so here I tried really, really wide. I went in a little tighter and go, okay, that's maybe better. I think it is better. And look, there's still nobody there. And then I went back wider thinking that wasn't good. And then in tighter. But look, there's a little variance there. And now I have a walkway here. I kind of moved a few feet. Oh, that's bad. All right, maybe I'll go tight. So now I'll go tight. Because, I mean, you, you know there's something there. And so I, I, I'm trying all these things. I'm, I'm doing a mental checklist of what I can do. So I go in really tight with like a, I only use one lens for travel, 28 to 300. One lens, I never change the whole time. And I go and go, okay, this looks good, except for there's, looks like dust on my sensor here. Okay, <laughs> birds. Uh, and then, okay, this isn't good either. This isn't good. Oh, gosh, the, the tourists have arrived. Oh. <sighs> Just need some, you know, Photoshop. That's not good. That's stupid. <laughs> I mean, but you know what? Here's the thing. You're, you're trying. And you know what's bad is the more you try, the more embarrassed you get. You're looking at the back of your camera. You're trying to make sure that no other, <laughs> no other tourist sees the back of your camera. You're like, oh. It's... So, I mean, but I'm like kind of going around and trying different angles. I'm like, man, are you kidding me? So I, I walk up there and there's virtually, you know, there's a couple people there, but virtually nobody there. So I'm, I'm trying to go through this mental checklist of working the scene. So what does working the scene mean? It means when you're standing in front of something that you know has potential, this building should have some potential, um, that you're trying to shoot wide, you're trying to shoot tight, you're trying to change your camera angle, you're just got to keep working it instead of just walking away and going, ah, oh, you can't get a good shot of this. So now here I'm, I'm sitting on a step, 
trying different ones. Now I'm laying my camera on the ground. You know you get desperate when you start just putting it on a self-timer. <laughs> Please let it be a good shot. So I lay it down, and, and I'm making my way around the building, and it's just its so frustrating. I'm like, I can't believe I'm alone at the Taj Mahal. <laughs> and it just stinks. And so I make my way around. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's, now that's actually the first one that I think is kind of cool. And, and, and this, this is kind of distracting these people over here. And if only there was a tool that would make that go away. But um, anyway, so I'm starting to think, okay, well, this is, I'm starting to get in the right direction because I've tried all these different angles and I didn't give up. All right, I walk to the front of the building, or that's actually the back of the building. It looks like a lot like the front. And then I'm back here again, and I'm here. And it's, it's now variations. I'm trying to think, okay, this is, well, that's not good. So as I'm walking around the side of the building, there are mosques on either side of, the, of this. And, and I see over here two women in, in very nice, you know, colorful uh, Indian, traditional Indian outfits, and, and they're crying. And I'm thinking, ooh, this is maybe someone's died or something horrible. And so I'm going to make my way over there just to kind of see from there. And I go over there, and I'm like, hey. This isn't bad. This isn't a bad view. Now, the women are still crying over there, and so it's a little distracting. Uh, so I, I just went over there and said, hey, shut up. No, I didn't. no, no, of course not. No. So I, now I'm starting to think, okay, well, there, there might be something over here. This isn't a view I usually see of the Taj Mahal from the mosque. On the, in fact, I went my whole life and never realized there were mosques on either side. The Taj Mahal is basically a mausoleum and on either side of these mosques. So, and, and you have the, 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 the guy like cleaning up here with the broom, and I'm like, ooh, this is good, guy with broom. So here they are, they've, they've actually started walking now, and so I'm now sitting on the steps of the mosque where they were crying, and I'm starting to go, hey, now this is actually starting to look good. Now it's taken me a long time to get here, all right, and then I'm trying different ones. I'm in tighter, I zoom out wider, I'm going, uh, then I'm back here again, and I'm like, okay, look at this, this isn't bad, look at this, ooh, ooh, better. So you see what the pattern is? You're just trying different things. You're not sure which one of them is going to work. But then you go, okay, that's not good. All right. But then all of a sudden you get to one where you're like, it needs some, you know, contrast, different things, but, but that's not bad. When you finally get to that one, that's the one you finish in Photoshop. Now, so, well, I'll show you. I'll actually show you what I did in Photoshop here in just a second. But at some point, now, I want to tell you about the crying women because there's something I didn't tell you. So I, I see them crying, and you know, I feel really bad. I'm like, wow, I want to respect their space. As I get closer, they're not crying. They're laughing hysterically because they're not Indian women. It was two Japanese tourists dressed as Indian women. 